Thank you, Jesus. In the Bibles, in your Bibles, in the Word of God this morning, Galatians chapter 5. Paul's writing to the church in Galatia. He is saying, it is for freedom. You guys see this? It is for freedom. Everybody say freedom. Freedom. That Christ has set in us, has set us free. What does he say then? He says, stand firm. Stand firm. Look at your neighbor and say, stand firm. Then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you would release your precious Holy Spirit in this place right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for what you're already doing, God. There's a shift. I already sense it, God, in my heart. I thank you for your faithfulness. And I ask this word will be a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Thank you, God, for speaking to our hearts. A now word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. You can be seated if you'd like, guys. I love this. If you guys want to play as long as you you want to, just keep playing. I love it. Uh, A couple weeks ago, yeah, just keep playing if you want. I love it. Are you done? You, you, a little bit hot. A little bit hot. I told them they were practicing this morning. I said, man, there's fire coming off those, those, uh, those frets. There's fire coming off those vocals. Did y'all enjoy the worship today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Went back to the enemy's camp at Shepherd Assembly of God in Evansville, Indiana. Every time we do that song, I could always count on Brother Tom. He'd, he'd cut off from us. We'd cut off, start running around the church every time we did that song. I loved it, man. Paul gave us a strong warning in um, Galatians chapter 5 and 16, and I shared this with you a couple weeks ago, that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart that, how many want to move a God in this place? Move a God in your heart, in your life, your home, in this church. How many want to move a God in this church, in this house? We're praying for a move of God that we hit this land, and I believe in many people, are many pastors and preachers are preaching and believing and praying, evangelists, missionaries, we're sensing that God wants to send one more revival before he comes back. One more revival. But it's not going to be a local revival. It's not going to be a geographical one location revival. It's going to be a worldwide, world global revival. Y'all believe that? I sense it in my heart. There's going to be, there's going to be areas all around the globe that are going to be experiencing revival. And I pray that Rock Hill First Assembly is one of those places that God just lights a fire in this place that, that we cannot contain, that we don't want to contain, that we want to let loose everybody that comes in, this whole community. Hallelujah. But, but, the word, but the Holy Spirit told me in Galatians 5, and Paul's reminding us, he says, walk by the Spirit. Everybody say, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. In verse 16 uh, through 26, he talks about this. And I reminded us of some, of some things a couple weeks ago, I said, you know, we want to move of God. We're all saying we want to move of God. We're praying for that. We're believing for that. But I said, you know, first of all, we're not hungry enough. We're not hungry enough. You guys, in two weeks' time, I'm seeing a pivot already. I believe, I believe you're hungry enough. I believe you are hungry enough. How many are hungry for God? Hungry enough. God, I hunger and thirst for your righteousness. I want you more than anything else in my life, hungry enough. And I, and I also reminded us that we're not honoring one another well enough. The Bible says to honor one another above yourselves. We're not honoring one another well enough. And we need to be pressing in to do that even more. And the, the last thing the Holy Spirit gave me is, you want to move of God, you want me to move on this church, then you've got to be unified. Everybody say unified. There's, there's not unity in the house. There's not unity in this house. And until we get that right... Look at your neighbor and say, we got to get it right. And see, we get that right, we're not going to have the move of God that he wants us to have. And I believe we might have a measure of that, and we are experiencing that, but I want, I want to be in that ocean like that tsunami that came in. I want to be engulfed in that. I want him to sweep over us and fill this place beyond where it overflows out, out of this place. And I was reminded... Of those three things, and I said, Lord, help us. What do we do? And I believe I've got to follow up with that today. In Galatians 5, Paul says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And he says, stand firm. Everybody say, stand firm. So I want us to raise the standard. When you raise the standard, when you raise the standard in your life, that means you're setting the bar a little higher. Right? Setting the bar a little higher, and so you're challenging yourself. You're saying, I, I, I'm not where I need to be. I need to get there, and so I'm going to raise a standard in my life. And I'm asking for us as a church body, 
for your life, for your household, and for your, your personal life, but also your personal walk with your family, but also beyond that, your personal life with this community that we call Rock Hill First. I'm asking that we raise the standard. Raise the standard. Look at your neighbor and say, Pastor's asking us to raise the standard. Go ahead and tell, remind him that one more time. I have you say that because I want you to get it in your knower. Galatians 5.1 Paul says, stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Underline that or highlight that in your Bible. I think it's really important to see that. A yoke of slavery. What is he saying there? He's saying, no longer do I want you to have a yoke of self and selfishness or selfish ways of thinking. No longer do I want you to have a yoke of man. No matter what, I want you to have a yoke of sin in your life. No matter, no wonder, I don't want you to have any longer a yoke of religion in your life. Yet, I want you to be free. I want you not to be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And in verse 4, he says, if you live this way, you separate yourself from Christ. He's talking to Jewish Christians who have become part of the way and yet they have forgotten about this new way. They're going back to their old Jewish tradition, and they're arguing about circumcision, uncircumcised, or being circumcised because you're part of this Christianity, and do we have to do those things? And then Paul's saying, if you operate in the law, if you operate in the self, if you operate on religion, he said, there's no freedom in that. As a matter of fact, you're abolishing, you're, you're casting out what Christ has done for you. And it's a separate issue. He said, it's not about that. It's not about your sin. It's not about man. It's not about self. It's not about religion. But it's about freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ because he has paid the price once and for all. We are, de we are dead in our sin because of Jesus Christ. It's his blood. It's his righteousness. It's not anything you can do to make yourself any more holy. God does that for us. He, he paid the price in full. Is anybody with me this morning? And Paul says, if you live this way, you say, Pastor, I'm not living that, but listen, maybe you are. If you're living with the yoke of sin, then you're caught in slavery. You're, you're, you're bound. If you're living in a yoke of man, trying to please man rather than God, then you're bound. If you're trying to live and in, in, in you're living with yourself in your selfish ways and, and you've built idols unto yourself. Matter of fact, if you build an idol and you begin to worship that idol, did you realize you fashion that idol with your own hands and you actually have, you have, you're larger than that idol is. You created it. Yet we let the idol become our God. If you're living that way, then Paul says, and you're bound by a yoke of slavery. <laughs> but look, in verse 6, read this with me, but verse 5 for through the Spirit we eagerly, eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. And he says this, for in Christ. Everybody say, for in Christ. For in Christ. Underline that, highlight, circle that in your Bible. And what he's saying is for those in Christ, those in faith, F-A-I-T-H, capital letters, there is freedom in Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, for in Christ, in faith, there is freedom. So I thought my message today, I felt like I wanted to preach that walking in spiritual authority, that, we, that we're the head, not the tail, that we have authority over the enemy. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the enemy's camp. We're going to take back what he stole from us. That's the kind of message I was going to preach today, and it would be easy to preach that. But you know what? The Holy Spirit stopped me in my tracks and says, you can't preach that yet because we're not ready. We're not ready to walk in spiritual authority. It's kind of like if you have teenagers in your house and they're around that age 15 16 how, do, how old do you have to be now to get a driver's permit 15 in south carolina 15 and a half oh, i'm glad they bumped it up to a half that's great <laughs> a 15 year old behind the wheel scares me sorry but i know when i was 15 i couldn't wait to get that permit or 16 whatever it was back in the day but when my kids and y'all have parents you know you know what i'm talking about when your kids get to that age that they want to drive it's, it's it's terrifying right it's like <laughs> It's like, oh my gosh, my little baby wants to drive a car. And, and so I, I give them the keys carefully, but I'm always in the car, right? Those first few years, actually, <laughs> riding with them in the car. So, but, but the first time you give them the keys and they're going to go out by themselves, you want to make sure they're ready. Everybody say ready. You want to make sure that they got what they got, their safety, they, they, they're safe, they're, they got what they need, they know how to handle themselves, they know how to control the car. You just don't, you just don't flippantly give that to them, that responsibility. And I believe in, in my prayer, the Holy Spirit was saying, yeah, you have the authority in the name of Jesus. You guys know that in the name of Jesus, you have the authority. You have that. But I don't think we know how to use that because we're not ready. 
We have the authority, but yet we aren't walking in it because we're living, we're living in, in the place of lack. What do you mean, Pastor? Don't step on my toes. Hello? We're alienated from Christ. Paul says, for in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus in faith, there is freedom. The Holy Spirit says you're not ready. Look at Galatians 5, 7. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you and to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast. Everybody say a little yeast. I want you to know, this is a now word for us, guys. This is a now word. I want you to get this. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I'm confident, Lord, that, the, that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, wherever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. You see... A couple of weeks ago, and maybe even before, and the Lord have, was giving me this, this overwhelming over this sense of this word that I have in my heart burning. I, I was telling Brother Ralph this morning, I'm about to bust. I can't, I can't wait. To, I, want, I want to preach right now. I'm ready. Because I, I, I sense that as we expose the devil's schemes, he's not happy about that. Right? When we expose the enemy of our soul, when we expose his schemes, and the schemes are very... He has one bag of tricks. He has one bag of tricks. He's only got three major, major tricks, and that is money, power, and sex. He uses the same three over and over and over and over again in different ways and different fashions. That's, an, that's another message. But when you expose the devil's schemes, and, until, until we get, something happens because until we get these things right in the house, we will not experience the move of God's spirit like we want to see it. But we're exposing his schemes, so it's no wonder that he turns the heat up. How many have experienced that in your life? You, you start exposing the devil and he turns the heat up and things start really going haywire. I don't know why that is, but I don't think he's very happy with this right now. And I'm thankful for that. Hallelujah. And I'm going to kick him right in the face because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. There's no weapon formed against you that shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> The devil doesn't like that. Jared, when, when, when we start praying that way and we start trusting God and we start calling out the devil for who he is, he doesn't like that. He's going to turn the heat up as much as he can. But what you have to do is you've got to turn the heat up as well on your side. Hallelujah. That was a great place for Pentecostal church to just get excited. You've got to turn the heat up on your side. And say, Satan, you have no place in my life. You have no authority in this house. You have no authority in my life. For greater is he. I know the Lord Jesus Christ. And Pastor Steve said Sunday, because I love Jesus and, and he's holding my hand and he's in my life, that he's put a seal on my heart and he's put a tattoo across my heart that says, Jesus loves me. Right, this I know right here. And he's claimed me for his own. So what do we do, Lord, I pray? He says, you know, you're not hungry enough and I believe, we're, I believe we're getting there. We're turning the corner. We don't honor one another well enough. We've got to do that better. We, don't, we lack unity in this house. We must be unified. So what, I said, what do we do, Lord? Should I encourage our community about the spiritual authority we can walk in? Because we take the spiritual authority, we can start casting out the devil, and we can start doing these things, and we can take authority over these things. And, and the Lord said, you're not ready for that. You remember the sons of Sceba? I said, ouch, Lord. Let me remind you, sons of Sceba, in Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 18, I'm not going to take time to read that. I want to give you a backdrop. Paul had been preaching in Ephesus for about two years. Great things are happening. And uh, this was recording in the book of Acts. It's recorded as apostolic miracles were taking place to support Paul's message. He's inviting believers to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He's saying, have you believed in Jesus? And they say, yes. He says, well, since, you, since you've believed, have you received the baptism? And, he's, and they said, yeah, we were baptized under John the Baptist. And he said, no, that's the, that's the water baptism. He said, have you, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, we don't know what that is. And he began to pray. And how many know that there was a mighty move of God and people began to speak in tongues and there were signs and wonders that followed. It was a move of the Holy Spirit upon them, and miracles were happening. They were taking place, and they were casting out demons. And Jesus had earlier given the apostles authority over demons. In Mark chapter 3, we see this. And Paul himself received this authority. We see this in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And there was, this, there was this Jewish priest by the name of Sceva. He had seven sons. And seven sons went around driving out evil spirits, it says in verse 13 of Acts 19. And they saw the success that Paul was having, 
and, and they begin to practice the same methods as Paul. I mean, no, we can, we can practice a good church service if we want to. We get the right, right response if we want to and try hard enough and just put the right formula together. We know how to do that. Your worship teams, you know how to put the right songs together to get the right emotions. A lot of guys in, in this seat know how to say the right things and the, and the right phrases to get the right responses. But I'm not about that. I'm about walking in the presence of the Holy Spirit to lead in God and speak when he wants to speak, move when he says move, do, stay when he says stay, do as he says to do. There's a big difference. So these sons of Sceva, they saw what Paul was doing. They said, man, we want to do what he's doing. And they began to practice the same formula, the same method, and they, and they, and they, would, they would pray over people. But there was a big difference. They would say to the demon when they prayed, they want to cast the demon out. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, not who I know, but whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. And what does it say in verse 15? Uh, Jesus, they, said, they said back to him, the demon said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know about, but who are you? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, please let that not be this church. That when people see the power of God, that it's not a man-driven thing, but it is a precious Holy Spirit of God. And the demons in hell will recognize the power of God, not the power of man. <laughs> Who are you? Verse 17, Ephesus was seized with fear. And the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. See, Paul's work versus the sons of Sceva, the Ephesians could easily see the difference between the power of Christ and the lack of power in those who pretended. I'm going to say that one more time because I thought you would get that. People in Ephesians could easily see the difference between the power of Christ and the lack of power of those who pretended. Does that speak to you about the day and time we live in, Pastor Paul? Can I just be transparent here about a lot of the way we, that we pretend that we're worshiping God to get the right audience, to get the right response? And we see that all over the place, and we've seen that abuse over the years. You can't, you can't manipulate those things, but you can, and, it, and it, it's just in flesh. Listen, I'm not saying we got the corner market on this thing, and I, I, I'm thankful for all the churches that we have out there, but I, there's a beckoning call in my heart for men and God and women of God to rise to the occasion and raise the standard so that we're not acting in the flesh. We're not worshiping in the flesh. We're not giving words of, that would tickle the ear of man in these last days, as the Bible would say that would be. But we're operating in the Holy Spirit, and he's, and he's leading us. But the beautiful thing about this in, in Ephesus that we see, that there, because of the difference in that, when they saw the power of God in the example of, of Paul the Apostle and his disciples, and they looked at the sons of Sceva and, 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 the, and the, the hypocrisy, if you will, of that, they saw the difference and they begin to become fearful. And it says that God actually used that to grow his church. And they saw the name of Jesus that would be elevated because they don't want to live in fear of what happened with the sons of Sceva in that. My friends, the world sees, listen to me, write this down on your heart. The, the world sees and knows the difference between those who do church in the flesh and those who worship him in spirits. I'm going to say it one more time. The world sees and knows the difference between those who do church in the flesh and those who worship him in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. God, let this be a house that worships you in spirit. Galatians 5, 6, I believe, is the key. Galatians 5, 6, read it out loud with me. The first four words, for in Christ Jesus. One more time. For in Christ Jesus. Jesus. One more time. For in Christ Jesus. Those who are walking by the Spirit living in Christ Jesus will be able to live by the Spirit. Walk in the authority that comes with living in Christ Jesus. Listen, you are not facing the devil's schemes in the name of yourself. Hello? You're not facing the devil's schemes in the name of your sin. You're not facing the devil's schemes in the name of my past. I'm not facing my devil, the devil's schemes in, in the name of my comfort and my painless Christianity. I'm not facing the devil's schemes in the name of self-centeredness and getting my way or trying to control or manipulate things. I'm not 
I'm not dispelling the enemy in my life by, by, by my name, by self-centeredness, by creating an idol that I create, but by walking in the Spirit of God. Therefore, if I am in the Spirit, if I am in Christ, he says, I am free. Hallelujah. Paul says, you are free in Christ. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So this is the now moment. I want you to get this. This is the now moment that, that God gave me, the now message that we need, that time with God is key. Time with God is key. In other words, we must create spaces and places in our lives, margin, if you will, to where you posture yourself and you get into the presence of God Almighty. You've got to do that, folks. If you want to move a God as a church, we've got to do that. We've got to create spaces and places where we spend time in God. We spend time in his word. We spend time listening to his voice. And we let God nurture that spiritual life in us. This is the now message right now. Listen, this is what he gave me. We are not ready to walk in the spiritual authority that we have been given because we do not walk by the spirit. We are not ready to walk in the spiritual authority we have been given because we do not walk in the spirit by the spirit. We do not know the spirit as we should. We are not ready for the authority that he wants to give us. I said, Lord, what's the problem? I believe we're hungry for that. We're desiring for more of a move of God to operate. How many, how many are with me on that? We want the Holy Spirit in this place. We want the manifestation of his presence in our lives. But we are denying, listen to me, just lean in just for a few more, more, more moments, moments, if you will. But we are denying the power there of by our lack. We're denying the power that there is available by our lack. What do you mean, Pastor Steve? Our lack of prayer. We're not creating space and places for prayer. By our lack of studying the Word of God and Scriptures, we're not studying the Word of God, we're not reading the Word of God, we're not letting Him speak to us through His Word. By a lack of honor for one another, honoring one another above ourselves, supporting and encouraging and loving one another, being kind to one another. We're not honoring, we're not, we're, we are lack of our love for one another, in other words. Our nation, guys, our nation, we are in the midst of a cultural shift. Do you all believe that? And they're going to be looking for the church for the answers. Now, this third wave revival, I wondered, I said, Lord, if we had a revival today, if there was 100 people that pulled into our parking lot, would we be ready for them? Would we be ready for them? Because that 100 people, if they come and sense and experience God, the power of God in this place, they're going to go out and tell their friends and their family, and the following week we're going to have 50 to 100 more people come in. Wouldn't that be exciting? It would be, but are we ready for them? Do we have things in place? Are we ready for that? To come alongside somebody and say, you know what? Uh, we're, uh, you, this is this community. I want to tell you what we're about. And if I can help you in your walk with Christ. And you're able to actually sit down with them and pray with them and show them the word of God and, and be able to spell out things. You see, when I got saved here as a young man at 14, immediately after I got up from this altar, I was surrounded with men who knew God and knew how to pray and knew how to seek the Lord. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they had a passion about Jesus. They had a passion about evangelism. And they began to pour into my life and show me who Jesus is. They began to model who work, how to walk in God, how to worship God, how to read, how to pray. And that changed my life. The gospel was never meant to be a faith in, in word only, a teaching. No, the gospel, rather, was meant to be experiential. It is demonstrated in power and manifestations of the Spirit of God. We live the Spirit of God. We live the, the power of God. We live Christianity by experience, not by, word or, not by word or just teaching. Our nation is in the midst of a cultural shift. Hallelujah. Roe versus Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court this week. History-making. History making. And I'll turn the news on. I think people have lost their minds. What in the world? But we shouldn't be surprised by that. He's coming soon. So I said, Lord, hallelujah. Christianity is, is not informational. Christianity is not meant to be informational. It is, it is meant to be transformational. Not informational. Transformational. Change lives. Changed situations. Gone from being lost to being found. Hallelujah. Gone from being sick to being healed. Gone from being an alcoholic to being free from alcohol and drug addiction. 
gone from being whatever has been holding you back, that yoke of slavery, gone from being yoke of slavery to Paul says, it is freedom that Christ has set us free. He says, be free in him. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what do we do? What do we do? I said, Lord, what do we do then? We're in a quandary here. We want to move of God, but you're saying we're not ready because we're not these things. And, and, and he, says, oh, he, says, he says, follow what Paul is telling you here and tell the congregation this right here. He says, stand firm in Jesus. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're at in life, wherever, whatever crossroad road you're at, I want you to stand firm in Christ Jesus. Doesn't mean to stand firm. Grab a hold of something you're familiar with. No? What's comfortable for you? It's to stand firm in Christ Jesus. So that might mean you have to make some changes. It might mean you have to set up a prayer room somewhere because you haven't prayed in a long time. It might mean you might have to dust off the Bible because you really haven't gotten in and studied the Word of God like you used to. It might mean you need to have some serious conversations with some people that there's a, Brit, there's a, Brit, there's a gap in your relationship in your family or, or, a, or a friend and you need to walk in God. And so that, that is, is, is keeping you from where God wants you to get to. You might have, need, need to have some honest conversations with, some, with someone. There's some things that we need to change about ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. If we want to move of God in this house. Paul says, stand firm in Jesus. Um, this past Saturday, a week ago now, not yesterday, our son Logan and Julia were in, in town, and um, we were thinking about what we could do on Saturday, just to kind of go out and do something together fun. And I saw that uh, historic Brattonsville is having an event out there. Y'all ever been to Brattonsville? What a, what a neat place. And while we're out there touring, touring the build, buildings and walking around and um, having a good time looking at stuff, and they, they had some reenactors out there in, in colonial costumes, and uh, the guy in the shop told me, he says, you realize um, the Patriot was filmed at the house across the street there, and several, of, several scenes in the Patriot, I mean the Patriot movie, that's like one of my favorite, my, I love that movie. Uh, he said the Patriot was filmed in several places and locations there, and, um, and we began to walk around and just see some of the rooms. And I said, man, we've got to watch that movie tonight. So we went and watched that movie uh, that evening, in the, uh, even into the next afternoon. Uh, one of my favorite scenes in that movie is a scene when, uh, when Mel Gibson, he's playing Benjamin Martin. He's, um, he's a militia leader for the Colonial Army. And the Colonial Army was, was based largely on, uh, or this, his example, his character was based largely on Francis Marion, which is called the Swamp Fox because of the, the militia type uh, fighting that they did. The colonials were fighting a fierce battle against the British, and the colonials began to retreat in fear of the vast British army that was advancing all around them, and they were coming over the ridge, and they were surrounding him. They were, they were coming over the ridge in force, and the colonial army had felt like they had been winning at one point, but then Mel Gibson turns in, in his character, and he sees the guy carrying the, the colonial flag, the American flag. He's retreating. He's coming back all down the hill. And he sees other ones begin to retreat, and the colonial army is starting to lose ground, and they're, and they're coming down the hill. And, and Mel Gibson, he, he takes the flag, and he picks it up, and he makes a determination, and he turns in the midst of this battle, and he begins to charge the hill. He begins to run back of the hill, and he begins to scream out, no retreat, no retreat, advance, 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 no retreat. And one by one, two by two, three by three, they begin to turn and they begin to climb the hill and race up the hill towards the enemy and to go to the enemy's camp. And he was saying, no retreat, advance, advance. And I'm calling on the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I still believe in you. I believe we can do this together. We can reach our community together. And I'm saying, no retreat, no retreat, advance, advance, advance. I'm believing it with all my heart that we will do this together. We'll say, Lord Jesus, no retreat. Advance, advance. Let's stand to our feet if you are believing that with me, that we would do this together, that we'd say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And we would, we would say, no retreat. Advance, advance. I believe in the power of God. I believe, Lord, in your word. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of our worship together, God. You will help us to advance. You will help us, oh God, to complete the mission that you've called us to do as we stand high and raise a standard this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We raise a standard together. We raise a standard together. Hallelujah. I'm going to have the worship team, if you guys will come on back up right now and begin to worship. And one more time, we're going to begin to lift up our hearts and our, and our hearts and our, our cry before the Lord. No retreat. We won't stop. We won't grow weary in well-doing. Don't stop now. Don't give up. Don't quit. Let your resolve be as for me and my house, as Joshua prayed. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I've made that determination in my life. 
Let us as a body of believers say this in, in, in this house. In this house, we're going to raise the standard. In this house, as for me, as for us, in our house, we are going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you, are, you who are weary, you who are torn from battle, you're tested and tried. You see that flag that, that was raised up in that depiction of that scene. It was one that his son had been sewing and working on in between the battles. And it was torn. It was tattered. It was weathered. It didn't have much fabric left. And, and Mel Gibson would, would pick that flag and he would carry it with him everywhere he went. Rock Hill First Assembly. A lot of us have a history with this church. And I was thinking back the other day as I was preparing my heart for this message today. I was thinking this church has gone through a lot of stuff over the last few years. It's gone through a lot of hurt. You've had a lot of victories. Don't get me wrong, but the enemy, the enemy has, has had a field day. And Pastor Bernie, you probably testify to this. He's been here through a lot of that. He's seen a lot of difficult challenges that come their way. Because the enemy is not happy when God's people are advancing. You have an enemy of your soul. He's not happy when you're advancing. And he's going to do everything he can do to, t- to stop what God's doing in your life. And I'm saying this morning to raise the standard. To raise the standard. Say, no more devil. No more devil. I take authority in the name of Jesus. I may not be ready to fully understand what that authority is, but I'm going to lean into the name of Jesus because there's authority in that name. And I do know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not praying in the name of Jesus that Pastor Steve knows or that Sam knows or, or, or that anybody else in this house knows. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that I know. So you're weary, you're torn from battle, you're tested and tried, you're bruised, you're, inj- and you're injured. If, you're, if that's you this morning, then I'm asking you to raise a standard in that, in, that, in that situation. If you feel torn, if you feel battered, if you feel injured, I'm asking you to raise a standard. Don't be in that spot any, any longer. Let this be a game changer for you today. So I'm raising the standard today in the name of Jesus. In my situation, in my hurt, in my pain, in my disillusionment, in the people that, dis, that, that I, I, was, I, was, um, I, I, I lost faith in because I saw man or I saw a situation that, that, that didn't look right. I lost faith. Any of that, you give to Christ today because in Christ we are free from those things. It's not time to retreat. The devil would like that very much. He's been throwing a lot at this church, all that he can, and I'm asking today, guys, are we gonna stand by and let him do those things any longer? Are we gonna stand by and let the devil do these things? Are we gonna stand by and let, and let the devil do what he wants to do with us? I, I would say not. I would say not. I would encourage you, let's not retreat, but let's move forward, let's advance. It's time to pick up your flag of faith and say no devil in hell will keep me on the run. No devil in hell will keep me on the run. And you raise high the banner of the Lord. You raise high the scripture, the the, the faith that we have in God, the worship we have in God. And he's the sword of the spirit. He's saying, I don't don't come against you with flesh, but I come against you with, with the power of the spirit of God in me. Hallelujah. Pick up your flag of faith. Pick up your sword. Nothing the enemy throws at me will impact me. For greater is you, are you, Lord, in me than he that is in this world. Greater are you that's in this church than he that is in this world. This is God's place. This is God's house. And we are part of his family. We are part of his community. And I'm saying, God, use us. Use us, Rock Hill First Assembly of God, to reach these people in the last days. God, to do your exploits in these last days. God, to see signs and wonders and miracles in this house in these last days. Hallelujah. We need this, guys. We need the power of God in this place. Raise your hand right now. I'm going to ask this team to begin to worship and lead us in the worship. Hallelujah. We need the power of God in this place. Raise a standard. If you're going to raise a standard, then raise your hands and raise your voices right now. Lord, we we raise a standard in you.